Hello, and today I wanted to talk to you about the differences between Lightroom and Photoshop. So my friend Bailey, I just did her senior photos and she said I could use her photos for this lesson. So I want to give a shout out to her and say thanks for that. She's pretty fabulous already, so there's not a lot of editing that needs to happen with her images, but there's some really great things that I could show you where you'll discover Lightroom's really great for something or Photoshop might be the way you want to go with it. So with Lightroom, the thing that I like about Lightroom is that it lets me organize a catalog for my images. So Photoshop, I'm just editing my image and Lightroom lets me organize it, name it, and keeps the structure to whatever folder I have created for these images. Also, when I go to edit in Photoshop, when I manipulate an image, I'm actually manipulating those pixels or adding additional layers to it, making it into a Photoshop file, or like I said, manipulating it. When it comes to Lightroom, instead of actually doing what we call damage to the image, this is a damage-free editing program, meaning it's creating metadata that is being added to the image so I can adjust it accordingly. So if I wanted to make this image black and white or do something wild and crazy, it's going to go ahead and figure out how to manipulate those pixels but it's not actually going to do any damage to that image. So right now I have this one here that I really loved. I found this great stump that had some great things growing on it and I was like, sit here. And I wanna show you some simple things that you can do in Lightroom. Once again, Bailey's already looking pretty fabulous, so there's not a lot of things that I would really need to do in Photoshop to this image. Photoshop, I like to think of um, it's a great program when there's a lot of things that need to be edited, a lot of changes, a lot of manipulation, all that good stuff. Lightroom is great for when you have multiple images that's part of a series that you want to keep organized and do some simple editing too. So as weather happens in Michigan, you never know if you're going to get a sunny day or not, but a cloudy day is always great for taking photos. So I have this image here, but I want to warm it up. So the first thing I'm going to do is play with my temperature and just warm that up. And you can see already how lovely that image is. It brings out the warmth of the fall colors and, and it just makes it look nice. Over here in the tone section, I'm going to let you in on a, big, on a big secret. Don't ever really change your exposure and your contrast. Unless you intentionally have shot underexposed and you're trying to push it up, you really don't need to manipulate those particular pieces. What you want to play with are your highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites. So I'm going to just pull my um, highlights here so you can see what's happening here and how I can just play with those highest colors or highest lights on this image and push it a little bit. Or if there's something in the shadows, I can bring that up a bit more so I can get a little bit more of the texture of the sweater and the boots here. And it's a lot nicer than just playing with the contrast and the exposure here. So here I've brightened my image up, but still keeping some really nice colors here. The next part here I have is called texture. Now what texture does, it's trying to find all the different pixels and separate them where they can tell something is a little bit different. The camera I'm shooting right now with is a full sensor camera. So I get some really great detail in there and I can get some details that no, most humans don't really want to see. So, but I also don't want to have it so where it's kind of got that rosy smeared Vaseline look on these images either. I want to keep my texture pretty pretty much where it is. Uh, this is what they look like. Um, if it was a foggy day, this is another one that you'll see some romance photos and stuff like that on. Um, but you can see how the clarity changes these images. There are times where you do want to use them, and it's up to you and your personal preferences on what you want. We have also vibrance and saturation, playing with the way colors are going to be working. And it's really a matter of figuring out what you want to do or not to do. 
in this particular image, I really love the fall colors and I loved all the oranges that were happening. So that's what made me want to take this image. Sometimes people ask me, when's a good time to um, make an image black and white and which when is it good to make it uh, a color image? And I want to say, if color is helping you tell the story, then keep color. If color is being distracting, that might be a good time to switch it to black and white. But the whole idea is that I'm getting the browns, the oranges, the greens all mixed in here, and I really love that. I also have the choice of switching things and manipulating color um, by hue, saturation, luminance. And what I tend to play with, if I was gonna manipulate it this way, is saturation. And I'm gonna go ahead and use orange for this example right now, that right now I can just desaturate so all the orange comes out. Makes Bailey look a little sickly, but there are some times where that's really helpful. Sometimes there would be like a bright red shirt in the background of something that I'm taking a picture of, and red is such a dominant color that my eye would go straight to it. What I would probably do is try to find that red and desaturate it this way. If it was a bigger problem and I had other things that were in red, then I would probably bring it into Photoshop to edit it a little bit that way and probably mask it out. Once again, you have some really great features to really make your image look nice. Lightroom does a lot of great things, but it can't fix a broken picture. So there's this part here that says sharpening. Once again, it's trying to find the edges of the pixels of where there's a different color and things like that. And it's gonna uh, just kind of push that contrast a little bit more. You also have one of my favorite ones is luminance um, and noise reduction. So just like I didn't want the, the Vaseline on the lens look earlier, I do want to make some things feel a little bit smoother. And I like to play probably no higher than 12 maybe 14 in luminance and make sure my sharpening is in a nice spot too and it just gives it a nice uh, smooth feel but it makes people still look like people and not glossy glossy creatures there are great Lightroom lessons specifically, and this is just a little video going over some of the basic things, but you can adjust the way your image is based on what type of lens it is. You can add effects and things like that. For senior photos, I just want to show you a couple of things that you can do in Lightroom, along with a couple of things you can do in Photoshop. So one of the last things I like to play with is a little bit of vignetting. Vignetting, what it does, you have the choice of making it brighter, like the old fashioned photos, or some of those memory photos, or you can make it darker. And the goal of this is to make sure the focal length or the focal point is on the person. I don't wanna to go too wild and crazy with it, but I just wanna make it so that the brightest part is where your subject matter is. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of vignette. I like to make it so it's not so obvious that I have it, and I like to feather it out. So it just kinda of makes the edges a little bit darker. All right, so I have that one nicely edited, and I think that's the way that I'll keep that one. I'm gonna play with a different image here and show you how I can bounce from one program to another. So here's this image of Bailey, and I have these great colors here. Once again, do I want it in black and white or color? In this particular situation, the mural, it was all about the color, and I have her in a nice black and white uh, turtleneck, and the color is really helping with the story. I wanna warm this up a bit, but as I warm this up, it also is warming up her teeth. I like how this feels, but maybe I don't want her teeth that warm. Um, and I am going to go up into my uh, menu here, and I'm going to go into Edit In, and I can bring up Photoshop. And what this is going to do is bring this file and this information over to Photoshop. So it's brought my image into Photoshop. And what I want to do is fix up the teeth. There are five 
six different ways to do everything in Photoshop. And I want to show you a couple of quick little techniques that I have that I can do pretty quickly that you might like. So right now I'm doing this on my laptop and I'm not doing this with a tablet. I strongly recommend having a tablet. But what I'm going to do is do a quick selection of the mouth area here. And I'm going to hit Command C, which is copy. And I'm going to hit Shift Command 4, which is paste into place. All right. So right now there's a copy of the mouth right there and also a little bit of her face there. And I am going to go to Image Adjustments, and I'm going to go ahead and desaturate this. Doesn't look very nice and normal right now, but what I want to do is take away some of that yellow that's going on from me warming up the image. And it also helps me um, to kind of see what I need to erase and all that jazz. So once again, her teeth are not this yellow. It's because I warmed up this image. And what I'm going to do is just use a soft eraser. And I could mask this out too. Um, but as, if I'm doing something that's a quick edit like this, I tend to just go ahead and just make a copy and mask it out. And I'm using a very soft eraser right now. And I am not trying to make it perfect. Um, we humans are not perfect, but now I've given her these uh, gray teeth. So what I'm going to do, I don't want her teeth to be gray. I'm going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to go to curves. And I'm going to pull this curve line up so that it's a little bit brighter than, you know, what's normal. <laughs> and we don't want it to be beacon white that way. But we do want to have it where um, it kind of it's kind of glowing there. Once I do that, then I'm going to play with a couple of different elements. So I can do screen, which is not going to help me very much, or lighten. But one of the ones I like is soft light, um, where it kind of gives a little bit of a, a brightening of the teeth, but it still makes it feel natural. I think that one's a really nice one I like to do. Or I go to normal and I play with the opacity and bring it down just a bit. And that way I can see, and one of the things to think about is that the white of your teeth um, should kind of complement uh, the whites of your eyes. You don't want it to be too wild and too bright. And I think that does a really nice job. It gives a soft little feel to it. You can see the subtleties of what's going on there. And I have that spot right there taken care of. All right. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead up here, fit on screen, and make sure it looks good. Take a look back and forth. And, it, and, it, and I feel like it does a nice job of really brightening that up. It still feels natural. I might bring it down just a little bit more. There we go. And you can see the difference. And like I said, she already had a great smile. It was because I warmed up the image that we had that yellowness there. And I just want to bring that back, um, the whiteness of the teeth. So, all right, I like it. I did everything I wanted to do. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and X out and hit save. And I want to show you what happens when I save it. So it's creating a TIFF file in the folder. And if I go back over to Lightroom, you'll see I have a second image now of that image where you can see what I've done there. And I can continue on manipulating the image I would like. Up here, I also have my crop tools. I have a spot healing. There's a lot of great things here that I can fix up simply that you can do in Photoshop where on um, some of my other videos I've shown you how to do deal with um, cloning and spot healing and things like that. So you have a lot of those things there. Like I said, Photoshop is really great for some really big heavy editing. I hope this video kind of helps you figure out when to use Lightroom, when to use Photoshop, or at least to give Lightroom a try, especially when you have a subject matter that is fabulous and you don't think you need a lot of heavy editing. Try editing it here in Lightroom instead of Photoshop. Thanks, and I will talk to you later. Bye.